With the start of my new Tillian campaign on the channel, I wanted to dive into a bit of lore that I haven't really touched on in a long time. Uh, the last time we actually went into any of the Southern Realms lore was during the heavy speculation time between Total War Warhammer 2's uh, announcement and its launch. So today, I want to start talking about some of the uh, legendary lords or the special characters of the Dogs of War 5th edition army list. Uh, this makes up the special characters of Kataf Southern Realms mod, and it also is going to play into some of the, the characters that we see, some of the characters that we've been playing through that campaign stream. If you have not seen the campaign, it is on the channel. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is like 6 p.m. GMT. So today we're going to talk about Borgio the Besieger, probably and arguably the uh, most iconic character of the Dogs of War. The way we're going to do this is just like any other Legendary Lord video that I do. I'm going to read through the lore blurb. We're going to talk about the magic items in that uh, army book, as well as his special rules. But rather than me speculating about how he's going to be uh, added into the game, we'll jump into Kataf's Southern Realm mod, and we'll actually just take a look at the way that uh, he has been brought to life through that mod, and I'll kind of say whether or not I think that that's 100% the way they would do it, or if there's things I would change, whatever kind of comes to mind. But let's talk about that lore and get into the might of Borgio the Besieger. Borgio, Prince of Maragliano, was nicknamed the Besieger because of his unsurpassed expertise in siege work. It was said that no city, not even the ingenious ramparts of Maragliano itself, could defy him. Borgio was certainly an expert tactician and won most of his battles. In three great victories, he established Maragliano as the most powerful principality in Tilia. After these, his enemies usually avoided open battle and shut themselves up within the walls of their cities, only to succumb to Borgio's siege techniques. He was equally astute as a politician, but rather tyrannical. Opponents and rivals did not last long. During his career, Borgio fought against every other principality and republic in Tilia, for one reason or another, from wars over trading rights to pure vendettas against rival princes who had tried to have him assassinated. Indeed, there were so many failed attempts to assassinate Borgio, some of which came very close to success, that he gained a reputation as a man who had to be killed more than once, to be sure. It is said that Borgio once defeated an orc horde by splitting them into three parts. Opinion is divided as to whether this refers to the horde or the individual orcs. It is also said that Borgio could ride a horse, go to sleep, and read a book at the same time. Another apocryphal tale tells that he was once taken prisoner by the pirate princess of Sartosa and escaped by diving into the sea from the dungeon tower, which was conveniently leaning over a high cliff, and swam the pirate's currents across to Tilia. Then he returned with a mercenary fleet, captured the princess, and would not let her go until the pirates had paid him an enormous tribute gathered from their far-flung stashes of plunder. If this ever happened, it must have been early in his career. It is also rumored that Borgio wrote very good poetry, did all his own cooking, wise man, and wrestled with lions. Borgio is noted for devising unusual battle tactics and new troop types, which usually took his opponents by surprise. He certainly had access to Leonardo's manuscripts in the library of the princely palazzo in Maragliano. He was a very big and imposing man of robust nature. In a siege, he always dismounted to lead the assault over the walls in person, and would strip off his armor and jump down into a moat to dig with the common soldiers. This endeared him to the troops, and he commanded a loyalty among his mercenaries, which has been the envy of every prince since. However, Borgio could not always count on similar loyalty from courtiers, intriguers, and spies in the pay of rivals, who knew they could not defeat him in battle, and so resorted to underhanded means. It is said that he finally met his end after a long and distinguished reign when he was stabbed with a poisoned toasting fork in his bath. The circumstances are mysterious, but this was probably the only occasion that a man such as Borgio could be taken by surprise. Many say that his marriage to Dolcetta, I'm sorry, Dolce Lada, the rather bad-tempered big sister of Lucrezia Belladonna, was his undoing. Borgio's demise resulted in street fighting in Maragliano as various factions vied for power. 
Borgio's excellent army fragmented and many illustrious regiments went their own ways under their own captains to become notorious regiments of renown, available for hire to the highest bidder. The lore of Borgio the Besieger kind of actually paints the, um, kind of paints the portrait of what we get in the Dogs of War. And this is directly from the 5th edition Dogs of War army book. Um, and one of the only ones that was ever released, unfortunately. And uh, by the way, the princess, the pirate princess of Sartosa is not Aranessa Saltspite. Aranessa Saltspite was just a lord of uh, Sartosa, or I guess a lady of Sartosa. Uh, she wasn't actually a, um, a pirate princess or anything like that, like we get in a Total War Warhammer. But Borgio's death kind of sets the pace for a lot of these regiments of renown existing in the Dogs of War. Um, Braganza's Besiegers, stuff like that, a lot of them really kind of get their start with Borgio the Besieger. And as you read some of the lore of the, of the book itself or of the other legendary lords, you see them giving a nod to the time in which Borgio was the head of Miragliano, or either in the middle of it or after it or before it, whatever one it kind of uh, plays, or whatever kind of chronologically makes sense for that character. But that kind of does it for our overall lore of Borgio the Besieger. Let's dive in real quick now to the magic items and special rules on the mod itself, on Catasso the Realms mod in Total War Warhammer 2. All right, and here we are in the game with Borgio the Besieger here. So let's take a look at, you know, I'm going to press start battle. It's a siege battle. Let's see what happens. Oh, that beastman's going to attack the walls. Who cares? So let's take a look at how they did this. The Prince of Borgio of Maragliano is one of the greatest condenteri to ever lead an Attilian army. Strong in will, charisma, and limb, he might even be the one to unite the city-state. So taking a look at how they kind of brought him into the game, uh, we've got a difficult to slay, which basically... Kind of get back a little bit here. Basically, the way this works is if his hit points are below a certain percent, 50% in this case, you will receive a full surge of health back. And I've actually seen this happen in some of my fights on the campaign. He was pretty low in health. All of a sudden, it just surged all the way back up. Now, um, I believe that this only happens once. Um, but I swear to God, I've seen it more. Yeah, the 180 second uh, reca or recast on, on this. So the way we actually see this brought into the game from uh, from the actual uh, tabletop is that Borgia the Besieger was notoriously difficult to slay. He was finally assassinated in his bath with a poisoned toasting fork. This was one of several deaths which he suffered, but it was the only one that he did not survive. There were numerous assassination attempts and many occasions when he appeared to fall in battle. However, he strangely defied death time and time again, enhancing his awesome reputation. So in tabletop, this simply gave him a 4-up ward save. So this kind of plays heavily into the style of the Heart of Avalorn play that we get when we look at, say, um, Tyrion or, or, or anything like that. So it's kind of a really cool way of doing things, and I, and I really like it. I think it is very indicative of, of a way that they would kind of include this into the game. Um, outside of that, maybe just a flat... Um, physical or ward say that he would get he already gets a physical resistance of 20 percent and maybe that's kind of taking it into effect i can't remember if that was actually because yeah armor of brazen brass we'll get to that in a second so he also has love well, of general is of course attached to him because he's so amazing that there's not a skill in the game they're in tabletop monstrous mask hell uh, together with his imposing appearance and the approaching of a huge mace, Borgio's grotesque mask helm may scare the opponent. Now this gives 15 armor and it can cause fear. I think that's pretty fitting. Let's take a look at how it is in tabletop. Monstrous mask helm. Borgio wears a grotesque helmet with a fearful visage sculpted on it. This combined with Borgio's imposing stature causes fear as, as described in the Warhammer rulebook. So, helmets in... Total War, or I'm sorry, in Warhammer rarely increased your slay, your save, um, in tabletop at least. Um, they usually affix like a, a fire resistance or any kind of bonuses that would really help you out, stuff like that. But they rarely, if ever, um, outright increase your armor. So I kind of like this, this slight increase to armor here with the monstrous mask helm. It could simply cause fear and I, and I would still would have been okay with it. Um, but that's the kind of fun thing with mods is you get to really kind of break the normal rules of the way creative assembly would add things to the game but i think it, i think it kind of makes a lot of sense let's take a look here now at the mace of might now for its inclusion into this game for four seconds you can activate it oh no that's a uh, duplicari 
um, for four seconds, um, it will give you a 100% AP bonus. So it's quite strong. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of very similar to what we get with uh, Gorok and his mace that increases, I think it's 60% AP and uh, weapon strength. But how does it really, I guess, differ from the tabletop inclusion? So the Mace of Might. Borgio wields a hefty mace made from a cannonball, which failed to slay him at the Siege of Remus and ended up embedded in his breastplate. Borgio, regarding it as a lucky talisman, had the cannonball made into a mace. If Borgio rolls a 6 to hit when fighting with the mace, the mace strikes with strength 10. So, <clears throat> I think that, that kind of plays a little bit into the way it would it would work here. You know, it is saying like, okay, you're going to get a, a real brief, really heavy hit from the Mace of Might. I think the Mace of Might should be an activatable similar to the way that we get with Gorok's Mace in that it increases uh, mail, weapon damage and weapon strength. I'm sorry, weapon strength and AP damage by, I think, again, it was 60, 70, 80%, whatever it was for Gorok um, to really kind of make him a threatening force on the battlefield to do a ton of damage. Uh, I think it makes, it, it plays into the way Crit of Assembly has done something before and it, it works. You know, I think that the way that Gorok is done is pretty well balanced. Borgio can't be on anything bigger than a war horse and that's the same thing from tabletop. He, he's limited to this mount. I mean, he gets high armor though, he gets a really good melee attack and melee defense and he gets some great weapon strength. Uh, kind of somewhat indicative of his profile. He only had, I think it was six um, weapon skill back in the, take a look here. Yeah, six weapon skill, but in fifth edition, that was actually quite high. So our last item is the armor of brazen brass. And if the game's pausing, it's because I'm I'm alt tabbing back and forth between the army book and the game, so I apologize about that. The armor of brazen brass just simply gives him a 20% physical resistance. Seems pretty fair. Let's see how it kind of translates from the game itself. So uh, this is a very this is the very armor which Borgia was wearing when struck by the cannonball at the Siege of Remus. The armor was forged in Mar Maragliano from melted down statues dredged out of the blighted marshes. Who knows what deities were represented or what magic was wrought into the metal? The armor certainly proved formidable. To represent the effect of Borgio's brazen bronze armor er, to represent the effect of Borgio's brazen bronze armor disregards opponents' strength modifiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat and disregards strength modifiers from missile hits. This, mean his, this means his armor save will never be worse than 5 up. This even works against war machines that completely ignore armor. Um, so I think a, 50, a 20% physical resistance kind of makes a lot of sense for him. Um, he does have a 15% missile resistance, and, it, and he has a shield here too, so he gets his uh, shielded 35% from the bronze shield. I think that Borgio himself, though, I mean, he's, he's taken cannonball shots to the chest and been just fine with it. I think that maybe rather than him having a shield, I could see him having just a two-handed mace and having like a 35% innate missile resistance or a 40% missile resistance. And uh, perhaps the brazen, the, the armor of brazen brass gives him a ward save because physical resistance only applies to physical damage, whereas ward save is all damage. So I think that that's maybe a little more true to form since the physical resistance part portion of this is still going to take damage, but if it's a magic attack, it'll bypass that. So I think the ward save kind of needs to be swapped out here. So rather than 20% physical resistance, maybe 10% or 15% ward save would make a Borgia the Besieger a little bit more true to form. Um, I haven't really ever taken that much of a look at how ward and physical resistance differ when it comes to damage. And maybe I could be speaking a little more speculative there, but... I think it kind of uh, speaks to uh, that the way the armor is represented a little bit better. But let's take a look at this last little bit here. The Duplicarii. This is not in the tabletop. Uh, fine, double pay. Now go out there and take that position. So basically the way this works here is I'll press this button. And I will just click on a unit. But I'll just do it here. Boom. And then strong melee defense. Strong, or I'm sorry, a bonus to melee defense. Strong, vigor, and unbreakable to uh, any unit I cast it on. I can't cast this on a lord or a hero, and it lasts for a pretty good amount of time too. Um, but <clears throat> I think this is a really cool way to pay, you know, like an homage to the way that he deals with his units, right? He leads from the front, he gets up close and personal with things, and he wants to be the guy who's helping them dig out their, um, 
dig out their trenches, fight with them in the front line. So this kind of pays, again, that homage. He also has his ability here, which also gives him a bonus. You know, there it is. Beloved general with four leadership. Troops easily followed Borgio, not only because of his victory streaks, but also because he seemingly cared for the well-being of his troops. So that kind of wraps up our video here on Borgio the Besieger. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little kind of foray into uh, the Southern Realms once more. And we're going to start doing more of these characters as I run out of a lot of the fun characters to go into. And I feel like Borgio is a really fun one. Leonardo is a fun one. Um, Lucrezia is really cool. There's a lot of really cool lords in the Southern Realms. And the, the, oh, the, the history of the Southern Realms themselves is very interesting. I think it's rife for us to talk about as we get closer and closer to the hopeful announcement of Warhammer 3 sometime this year. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. If you want to see Borgio the Besieger in action, make sure you jump onto the stream. Uh, it's going to be held two hours from now. This video is being released at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard, and I'll have a, a stream up at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one, and take care.